Hello, everybody. Hello. Welcome to the first edition. Yes. I'm pretty yeah. excited. I got it. So this is uh, our first uh, try episode one of uh, Sunday Tea Book Read, mm -hmm. and today we're gonna dive into the China Tea Book. Yes, we're gonna get started. Reading so, um, the book. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. We're a little bit. We're so excited. We're a little bit nervous. We've been and preparing we for this. We haven't done a live for quite a while. Yeah, so, it has uh, been a little bit rusty. You know what? I'm just gonna brew up some tea while. Um, and I'll give you a little rundown of what a Sunday tea read, um, what a Sunday tea read is. All yes. right. So I'm gonna brew some black tea, uh, Jiu Chu Hongmei, and uh, are you Ying sipping? Number nine. Uh, oh, Ying Hong number nine. <laughs> Ying number we told nine. everybody it would be Ying Hong number nine, so it's going to be it's Ying, Ying Hong number, number nine. nine. I don't know why I'm thinking about it. I grabbed it out, I got it all set okay, up. Okay, so. okay. Ying Hong number nine. <laughs> and <laughs> and um, yeah, what's in your teacup? Are you drinking any tea at all? Yeah, and will you let us know what you're brewing? I'm going to go over the, uh, what, the Sunday tea read. We have a whole video about it, which you can check out in our, uh, that we already did, but just to recap, I'm super excited about Sunday Tea Read, okay? What, we, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a book or an article or a paper that is originally written in Chinese, which means it's probably hard to access this information. It may or may not have already been translated or possibly the translation is quite confusing. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump here onto Sunday Tea Read, Sunday Tea Book, and we're gonna translate the content live with you. Um, this is awesome, right? Because in order to do this, we're going to be diving into China's culture and go ahead, show them up the tea. This yeah. is the uh, Yinghua number nine. Dry leaf. leaf. Yeah. All right. So in the, in the course of translating, we're going to be diving into China's culture and history. And, um, and uh, yeah, so like what I said, or what I like, the way I like to think about it is imagine if you read a really great book that's already well translated or maybe originally in English you get some great information, which is awesome. But if you're here participating in the translation with us while we do it, you're gonna get so much insight into the history and culture and just the process, the confusing elements are gonna be discussed. Let's have a little. Tea calm down. Mm, tea calm down, yeah, I'm super, super revved up about this because I really, because I myself have learned so much working with Jen on these exact kind of issues that I think the chance to share these with you is just gold. All right, so for sure as we go along, chip in if you have comments, leave them down below. We're gonna be checking those at the end of each section uh, on YouTube and ask us anything you need to ask, okay? If you're confused or anything, don't hesitate. All questions are great, but do, because we're only coming back to them every now and then, please try to be as detailed as possible when you ask a question so we can kind of remember which part or whatever you were talking about. Okay, so strap in and get ready for the Sunday Tea Reads and they're happening uh, regularly every Sunday at 1 p.m. <sighs> it's like a two times the talking speed. Mm. Yeah, I'll be reading in a more uh, normal manner. Okay, good. Have some sip of a tea. Mm -hmm. And we should say, for those on Instagram, we're good. Mm. We are using some technology that we cannot use on Instagram. So we're doing the intro on Instagram, but if you're interested in this, jump on over to our YouTube live, where we'll be actually, when we dive into the book, that's where we'll be going. Yes. Well, somebody is drinking some wee tea lai. That's cool. So mm, I just nice. wanted to mention a bit about this book, because uh, this, is w this will be the first uh, project to work on. A work on called China Tea. Um, uh, this is a book written by my mom. I think it's a great book to get started because it's a book uh, targeting uh, more for introduce people to Chinese tea. So mm -hmm. uh, it's a very uh, easy understanding and at the same time it lays a really solid uh, foundation mm -hmm. of uh, Chinese uh, understanding of the Chinese tea and the tea culture and uh, through this kind of a uh, uh, group in group translation kind of a work is a great for us to settle on specific tea terms and tea names that a lot of times can be confusing uh, so for future any future work and more papers and articles we're going to translate this will be uh, really great uh, to put us on the same page and the future work will be just smooth like butter. 
Hopefully. <laughs> so just somebody said they can't see the live stream. So can you read that? What does that say? Unable, Unable to, to connect to chat. Please try again later. Hmm. hmm. See if we can kickstart this. I'm not sure if that just means the chat or what. Right. It does say we're live though. Maybe we can find out, but usually we get some chats. If you're if you're watching us on YouTube, can you throw a little shout out so we can know we're uh, we're actually live? We're having some questions about that. Mm. All right, but for now I think let's just carry on or wait no, for No, I think we should actually figure this out before we uh, start. No, it, I don't know. It says we're live here. It's just the chat, but we do okay, need the chat. Okay, but we do we? need the chat. What is trying and later? Okay, let's try and get the chat working out. I I'll throw out a hello. Mm -hmm. We'll see. I'm a little nervous to end the what stream. Okay, first time, to... guys, please be patient while we work through this. That's the resolution message, okay. not really related. Nothing we need to... To chat. Hmm. Is it possible to reconnect? That If we end it, I think that's it for this stream. We've got to start a new one. Just check out from YouTube, you are live there. Oh, thank you. Oh, thanks for checking that. That's super yes. helpful. Okay, Can you guys great. see the, the, ta the chat that we just sent? The chat thing? I don't know about that. Can you see we just sent a chat message and is it showing up on your screen? Yeah, we just sent out a little hello. Right. And how many viewers are here? Does it tell us in this mode? If you remove the cell phone, I think you can see. All right, it. sorry, Instagram, you're going on a little roll. Oh yeah, we got 11 folks, 11 concurrent viewers, six likes. I have to assume you guys are probably chatting to us. Pop out chat, see if that works. Pop out, oh, nice one. All right, let's pop it out, see if that reconnects it. Oh, beautiful, tons of comments. I'm going to try and put it back into the... Suddenly we see all the stuff. Yeah, we okay, see all your chats good. now. I'm just going to shoot it back into the... Uh, no, we can't, so I just got to move it. <laughs> We've got this whole thing set up a certain way, but this will work over here. Yeah. Great. Yes. All right. So everybody says all good. We can, can see, see the see hello. Okay, we see your chats. Okay. Thank Technical, you so much. Thank you very much. Um, nub, nub Kiminal. Nub Kiminal for letting us know okay that was super helpful otherwise we would have been wondering why no one's commenting on <laughs> the uh, YouTube stream right perfect okay so where we were was uh, I think you were you had explained a bit I was gonna go into the format for today now okay. uh, but technical stuff all new all exciting <laughs> okay so for today what I'm gonna do uh, as Jen mentioned uh, Jen Lee's book China Tea is already translated so I'm gonna go ahead and read a section of that book it's nicely broken up into little sections and then I'm, I'm just gonna read it as it's written and then I'm gonna come back and point out the spots that I found confusing or hard to understand and that by and large is gonna cover most of the questions we're likely to have however mm. Jen has also read the Chinese uh, part of the book. So anything that was totally lost in translation, she's yes. gonna jump in and say, or hey, it's just or super confusing or misunderstood. Yeah, or mm. not mentioning that I think is something interesting. Yep. So I would just uh, add on, fill so, you guys in with those yeah. elements. So that's gonna keep us covered over the whole thing. So, and then, um, and then of course, after we're done, we're going to publish a link to the finished translation, which will be available after the show. And that is, uh, that's it. So if you think this is an awesome idea, uh, don't forget to click uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, click on the notification bell so you get reminded when we're gonna go live and do one of our uh, Sunday tea books. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, uh, tell yeah. your friends about it who are into tea for sure. This is gonna be a really great way to learn and it's gonna be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And did I miss anything? I don't know. Uh, no, I think we can. You know, get started. All right, Sip so some tea and have that. And for Instagram, sorry, we have because we have to show the text and. Don't yeah, we're gonna to have the book and everything. So bye bye Instagram. On YouTube. We'll see you on YouTube. Share to TV. Okay. And I think I'm just gonna brew a whole uh, serving pot of tea. And as I sip, I can put this away. Awesome. Can I check the comments here? Uh, you can check the comments when I get us oh, all set up. See what our... people are sipping. I'm all right. curious about All right, that. so let's come to the comments. We'll get caught up on the comments from YouTube side. Um, and here we go. 
So we've got, uh, holy cow, we missed a bunch. Hello, everyone. Who's ready to learn? Ram VM, welcome guys. Welcome everybody on YouTube. Norway, we've got Norway in the house. Woo! Big shout out to Norway. Thanks for joining us, Bram VM. All right, and not, not to diminish those who are always here. Thank you guys very much for coming back. Really appreciate it. This is super. I'm just trying to see. Uh, excited from Joe from Okia City. Ready to learn. Oh, Joe, Joseph Schmidt is here from uh, Oklahoma City. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. It's so cool to see you guys from all over the world. Um, JS is here. Igor, we know Igor's hailing in from Spain, our dynamic keyboard player. Um, and then they guys can see us, but we missed all those comments. Just looking for teas. So what are you guys all brewing? Just reload the page. I believe that it is the fix. Okay, I'll try that someday when I'm not actually. I'm gonna go live on my little. Mm. Yeah, that's a good tip. See the chat. Everybody could see the chat. All her, and we're almost caught up. <laughs> And Nub Kimenal, oh, from, came over from Instagram, is here. So this is great. Cool. I hope you don't mind, but you came up in my recommendation list, so I tossed a friend wreck on Facebook. Oh, yeah, don't worry. Okay, so no teas. Nobody told us anything about what they're brewing except the Wuyi Chilan. Ah. What are we drinking? So we're drinking uh, Ying Hong number Ying nine. Number nine. <laughs> Gorgeous black tea. I'll show yes. you guys the liquor color without spilling the liquor on the uh, oh cannot see the live <laughs> it's a little trickier we've got all kinds of technology now which makes things complicated is that centered on the page yes yes oh, good enough. I like that center you don't so that's your style <laughs> I just want to shoot up the liquor color and you know what I'm kind of excited to just dive in and get things rolling here right. so how about uh, we do that okay let's get this started all right, so I'm going to start by bringing the book up here. I'm going to go like this. And we're going to go like that, the comments, and like that. All right, so here we go. So we're going to start with the, uh, right, so China Tea, the cover. And we'll start with the preface, and then we'll go through and we'll keep going from there. So I'm literally going to just read it out. All right, so preface. Can I pull this closer? Yep, it's going to be noisy. I won't read while we do it. Pulling the table in. All right, guys. Okay. So, uh, and I think some of you even have the book, so feel mm. free to follow along. I'm on yes. the preface. I'm not sure what page it is. Tea drinking, flavor of life. There are seven things we have to contact every day besides bavin, rice, oil, salt, sauce, vinegar. The only remained flavor of life is tea. Okay, I'll warn you, I'm going to chuckle every now and then. Maybe it is so common that it is always neglected by us. Actually, Tea can only quench your tea can not only quench your thirst, but also lose weight, not only maintain your health, but also keep your beauty, even to help control and treat three hypers illness. Thus, people buy them in a fashion, which made it as a gift or a fashion. In the office, drinking tea is not as instant as drinking coffee, but to show you're calm and graceful. Drinking a little tea in your mouth, feeling the fragrance running through your lips and teeth which make your, you clear and cool. Such a leisure will be envied by a group of people around you. In, in su I'm trying really hard to keep saying. In such a good mood, immerse yourself to the next part of work. How pleasant it is. After experiencing the heart of life and the different types of world, enjoying a cup of tea might as well. The strong fragrance just runs around you. Such, put your mind at the moment, resolving defects down dirty. This is why <laughs> coffee is just a kind of drinks, no matter studying or development have been done. However, tea can be assigned more meaning. Very often, the benefits of tea, not in the nose or mouth, but in your own thought. Okay, if you felt like I was, <laughs> I felt like I was doing a script for an old Kung Fu movie. <laughs> but anyway, so there you have it. So that's the preface. So I found it, when I read through that, I found it, really uh, actually really confusing um as you probably captured there's um even i can notice uh, those uh, mm. english at least the grammar mistakes or oh, weird yeah, stuff yeah. like yeah yeah so basically the um the com right off right out of the gate right seven things to contact every day besides and then the list of the seven things 
Um, so that is a bit weird. And then Bavin, I had to actually look it up. I had no idea what that was. Yes. And yes. I don't know if you'll find it. I did. It's not true that I looked it up. It's actually I just asked somebody beside me <laughs> what is the missing one of the seven, and we identified it because it wasn't listed. Right. So the Bavin uh, is actually is talking about the firewood. Mm. Mm. Firewood. So these seven things yeah. are not like uh, people randomly listed or any study shows the top seven. It's actually a saying in Chinese. Kaimenqijianshi means the seven basics, the seven necessities of life. Mm -hmm. So firewood, rice, oil, salt. Sauce is the uh, is like uh, it fermented as bean paste yeah. or those kind mm. of a, that kind of sauce and vinegars and uh, tea. So that's a saying that everybody know, kind of in China, right? Yes, yeah. And so it basically just means that tea is one of the seven necessities of life. Right. And it goes on and kind of talks about... Uh, to Chinese stuff. <laughs> yeah, in, in, yeah the, the whole frame of reference is Chinese. And then it goes on to talk about how it is not only good for quenching your thirst, but is also great for a bunch of other stuff, which I think we do hear about all the time. Mm -hmm. Health benefits, um, the three hypers was super confusing for me. I think it is. Uh, it's no, this, it doesn't make any sense in English. I guess. Is that well, it, right? I found out that it might if you're a doctor, but oh. if you're not, you might not know what the heck's going on. It's um, basically uh, it's a, a direct translation from Chinese. So we call that Sangao three hyper. It's a short form of talking about a high blood sugar, high blood fat, high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. So three things. Yeah. So, and um, yeah, and then it does a little comparison with coffee, which was very interesting. And the gist of it is that it may not be as convenient or as instant or sort of grab and go. Oh, oh. yes. There's a, something that. in the um, in the paragraph, it talk about them, how to maintain your heart health mm. on the very first paragraph. But in Chinese, even though it literally means maintain your heart health, it doesn't mean that because a lot of times we refer how heart as the like mental state. Oh. You know, so the drinking tea is good for peaceful mind or more stuff like, your like mood. that. Your mood gets mm. your relax and stuff is right. more into the mental health as matter rather than literally heart by you know right. heart. Right. Yeah. Which is covered by the three hypers. <laughs> yes. Right. Yes. Okay, that's a good one. I completely missed that. So that was kind of lost because with so much we hear about health benefits mm. of tea, it's just kind of, okay, heart health, sure, why not? Yeah. And you can see in this, uh, even though the translation seems like um, pretty specific about that, but the gist of that is because the tea in Chinese culture is more than a beverage. It has a lot of cultural meanings and it has that kind of... Uh, uh, you know, uh, great for mental health is mm. a lot of those elements, almost like calligraphies and stuff. It's not just uh, you mm. write good stuff. Yeah, because. it's almost an art form. Like yes. the practice of tea yes. is more like the practice of yoga or practicing calligraphy. It's like in that genre of mm -hmm. a calming discipline almost. Right. Mm. So that's kind of what the second paragraph is um, is starting to touch on. Um, starting the transition towards that, talking about how it's more than just a pleasant drink with nice fragrance and nice flavor, but it's also something that will uh, help you approach your work with... So uh, you understand paragraph two? No problem, par paragraph three? Paragraph two, yeah, was not, not too bad. And then... Um, you can kind of guess what it is. Yeah, they were both, those were both guessable. The first one was really a curveball, but this, and then the second one, although it's a little bit uh, Kung Fu style movie translation. <laughs> it's, um, um, it's basically, again, sort of what you paraphrase that tea is more than just, uh, but, but, the, but the, it's very vague, like it doesn't come down to like, why is it so special, which we kind of mentioned that it's a practice, it has those benefits. Um, yeah. So, benefits of tea not in the nose, but in your own thought. Yeah. So it's it's a little bit poetic, kind of warming us up the, to the. the, to the power it's a tea. I know what you're saying. Like it's like feels like a zigzag and a little bit crazy and mm. not clear. Right. It's because it's really trying to word by word translate the Chinese mm. version, which is beautified in the more 
poetic, poetic mm. way. Mm. So uh, that's why it is. But mm. just to wrap it up, as uh, the gist of it is, you know, it's a common thing that we, uh, it's a so common and so daily and essential for Chinese people's life. Right. And it also has, besides as a health benefit, it also has lots of uh, uh, benefits to the mental health, to you know, uh, cooling down as the last, uh, almost like a meditation, yoga, mm. that kind right. of a flavor. So right. that's pretty much it. Awesome. So it's establishing the significance of tea in yes. Chinese life right. now and historically. Summarize. All right, <laughs> All right so we're going to move on to... Mm-hmm. Table of contents. Right. I think that this is great. Those are pretty, sim- like pretty straight up English. Just mm-hmm. so, uh, I just want to quickly go through that as the structure of the book. Yeah. Which in the very first part is very sim- simply introduce people to some basics about tea, where what's the origin, where it's from, uh, a quick glance at uh, you know appreciation and uh, to recognize and uh, observing teas and stuff while the second uh, the second part is more talking about because this book is really aimed at uh, beginners so how to brew is so how to choose uh, the uh, vessels how to um, what are the teas out there there is a big chunk of the book that give you tea snap shot of some key teas right, in right. Each, famous teas yes, and, yeah. in its uh, tea categories. Mm-hmm. Well, the last one is a little bit more talking a little bit more about the health, the implications, and what else you can use at home. That's part three, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's the kind of So structure. that's the overall breakdown of the book. Mm-hmm. So the first part is um, the direct translation is tea seeking. Um, I, I think basically of what we're looking at here is like exploring tea. Yeah, so get to know tea, the kind basics of flavor. Of tea. Yeah. yeah. And we should just quickly, before we dive into this next paragraph, let's mm-hmm. jump back and check comments for any questions on the preface, maybe? We'll have oh, to we, start missed with. Some, uh, we missed some comment here. What's out the tea that I have never tried before this occasion? And then more. Dali, Shen Cha Tuo, 2007, and only on the third infusion, but so far it's packed with honey and incense flavor. Mmm. Cool. The ones I'm done with my core, I think I will switch to Inco number 9, seeing that I was just recently gifted. Oh, wow, nice. <laughs> That's a pretty good <laughs> bundle you got there. Yeah. And I'm someone else is having that. some jasmine. Nice, JS. Sipping on some jasmine. Cool. Awesome. So no major questions. So we'll march on forward to tea seeking. All right. Mm-hmm. So here's the read. Tea is one of the most classical plants, which was born in Castle Peak, grow up in deep valleys, in the deep valleys, formed in the forest, coming out of the book of tea, which written by Lu Yu, teaching people to drink and enjoy the spirit of mountains and seas. That is why it contains humans, culture and customs to find better tea only being in a calm and peaceful mood can get it. What is the Castle Peak? When I read that, I was right. like, what's a Castle Peak? Yeah. And I don't know. Yeah, and if I'm, if I'm brand new to tea, I have no idea what, like, it's really confusing. And it means it's, uh, bo- like, born is already a little confusing. It's tea, it's not really born. We don't think of plants as being born. Ah. But, um... Uh, if if you're familiar with tea, I kind of guessed. I think it means basically high mountains, deep valleys, and forests. Because tea, but you kind of. I've been out in the field, so I kind of had to totally guess at that based on where I've been. High in mountains, deep in valleys, and in forests. <laughs> but mm. it's it's really tricky. Is that pretty close? So, yes. Again. Again, it's very, pretty poetic. It's a, it's poetic, but it's really. Uh, uh, literal translation mm. as uh, in chinese this is a three four letter uh, four letter uh, phrases that are rephrasing and rephrasing and rephrasing it's a way of writing right to give the meaning without repeating with the same word uh-huh. so 
it, all you say is uh, tea plants grow on mountains, valleys, and uh, forests. Okay. That's pretty simple <laughs> translation. But in Chinese, it means uh, it comes in the green mountains and, uh, right. you know, in the peaceful uh, valleys and the form in right. the forest. It's an artistic way. But mm -hmm. And uh, coming out from Book of Tea, I don't think it. It coming out again, literal translation, from. which means uh, from from yes. Liu Yu's book of tea. But the Chinese version is more walking out of this book oh, has that again. kind of a flavor. Right. Yeah, but from the book, which written by Liu, Yu, book of tea. I think the English way of calling right. that is a classic. That's right. The Different? classic. The classics classic of tea. Classics. Classic. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's the classics of tea or classics of tea, but. It has an S, classics. Classics, okay. Mm. So, uh, classics of tea by Lu Yu. Uh, class, so, Lu Yu is someone. Uh, do you know the background of uh, Lu Yu? Uh, no, not so fully. Like, I think that's your. Like, I know Lu Yu, of course. Uh -huh. But if you're new to the book, again, it's kind of dropped on you here. If you're new to tea, I mean, it's just kind uh -huh. of Lu Yu. Uh, it just kind of seems like he's some guy who teaches you about tea. But it's not too. Um, yeah, so do you know? Do I know? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay. Do you want? <laughs> so basically, it's saying. <laughs> no, he knows that he's not gonna share that with you. No, I'm not. No, I'm kind <laughs> of sticking to what the what it says. So basically, right. that from Lu Yu's book of the classics of tea, it te that book teaches people to enjoy. Uh, it teaches people that in enjoying tea, you're actually in touch, getting in touch with the spirit of the mountains and the sea. Mm. Um, which is, you know, and that the drink is imbued with culture and beauty, not just a drink. Um, and yes. to, to have a better sip, you just have to bring yourself to a meditative state kind of thing. Yes. Mm. Yeah. I just want to add on. First, Lu Yu is uh, a tea uh, considered the Chinese tea sage from Tang Dynasty, which is around uh, 700 AD ish. And uh, uh, Book of not book of tea. Uh, classics of tea is the book written by him, recorded to the where the tea are uh, grown in at that time in part of China, and uh, how to process it, uh, how to evaluate it, how to drink it, and uh, a lot more is considering the uh, milestone in Chinese tea culture. Really set tea as a very uh, officially said that as a higher level than any other like beverages and roles mm -hmm. give it more implication I think those are important to share. what do you think oh yeah absolutely 100% I'm just gonna check and make sure yeah. we've got the right content yeah no I think uh, and you guys let us know what you think too if you think mm. that was uh, I think those things are really uh, do we need to explain those little things or you prefer yeah. just I don't know, we can, you know, like a Wikipedia or stuff like that, but yeah. I, I think it's important if somebody really never yeah. heard of that, totally it would be who is that and what is that, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't see any questions and that makes sense. We're just kind of getting warmed up. The whole book is just part of me really prefacing, so we'll just keep on rocking mm -hmm. to the next section, which is Shannon discovered tea. China is the hometown of tea, and tea is a prosperous beverage in the world. Who is the first one that discover it and distinguish it medical effect and make this healthy plant known by all people? There was a saying in Lu Yu's Book of Tea. Why tea becomes a kind of drink? Because of the discovery of Shenong and the spreading of Lu Zhou Gong. Emperor Yan, also named Shenong, is recognized as the ancestor of the whole nation of China. In order to make people eat safely, prevent illness, he personally tasted hundreds of herbs to identify whether the herbs could be eaten or not. At the same time, he found the special medical effects of tea. According to, that leg according to legend that Shenong tasted all the herbs to help people, while there were many delicious fruits or vegetables which could be served as food, meanwhile there were still many poisonous plants. Once he ate a kind of poisonous herb by accident and then he fell down. After he woke up, he found there was a little tree next to him, which, with the smell of fragrance, Shenong couldn't help picking up a leaf and chewing in his mouth. Immediately his mouth filled with fragrance and he was fine. 
After that, Shenong transplanted the little tree to the human settlement. Likewise, this tree was a tea bush. Kind of epic to read that. Even, <laughs> a little story. Thing? Yeah, even though it's it's a、uh, it's a bit like there's obviously a couple grammar things. It's pretty just fun to see that, you know, this is the this is the legend of the origin of tea, right? Yes. Paragraph, especially paragraph three, is really、mm. giving a little vivid story of、yes. how he found it. And I think there's a few versions, right? But I like this one. <laughs> he passed out from a poisonous plant, woke up,、right? hey, there's a leaf, <laughs> eat it, and then is better, right?、Mm-hmm. So,、um, let's check the comment to see the last one because this one has a、uh, the way it has a little bit of laggies.、Maybe、oh, true, true. Perhaps we did miss some. Yeah. So and and okay, so、um, oh here. Josh said, "I think perhaps for us, he has our internal knowledge and context to help to fill in the blanks." Hmm. Agree. Right. And it helped me a lot too. Joseph Burden said, "I'm pretty sure that Luyu book is a classic of tea." Oh, okay. Because it's a single word in the bigger cor- corps. Corpus. 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 Of the Chinese classics. Of the classics. Chinese classics. Right. Right.、Okay. Right. Thanks classic for that. Classic of tea. Yes.、Mm. Uh, I, I trust him. He's translating like serious right, right. historic literature. I don't literature. know if you guys are interested because、uh, in Chinese, uh, uh, classic of tea by Lu Yu is called Cha Jing. It's not book of tea. It's not Cha Shu. It's a Jing, not Shu. So that refers to it's. It's more than a book. A Jing is used for those、uh, who has a compass kind of a flavor to the domain. Or mo- almost like a textbook, or a kind of something that people can look uh, up uh, to, uh. kind of a book.、Mm. It's a special title for certain books. Almost like a, I don't know if encyclopedia is probably too, but that's a tome of knowledge reserved for、mm. things that are useful references of knowledge.、Mm. Maybe also often used in like a religion. Like、uh, Buddhism and stuff, a lot of their books are called Jing because those、oh. are guidance. It's a very high level. Script、thing. maybe would be English translation. I、that. don't know, but classic of tea is the、uh, way I think. Cool. And that is really cool. A bit of more、uh, historical legend. Yeah, I think、right. referring to the、uh, Shenong. Right. Right. Okay. Great. So、um, okay. thanks for that, guys. That、yes. is why we're doing this in a group. Perfect. Huh. That's it. Okay, that、mm-hmm. section I have a little thing to say. Oh, perfect! On the one we just finished. You fully understand the English? No problem for you at all. Yeah, I think it's、uh, like like we said. It's、uh, it's yeah. It's not too bad if especially if you have a bit of background with tea. But even if you don't, you kind of get the flavor that this is a story. You've got the、um, the an- the discoverer of tea. Okay. Okay.、Um, and you know who discovered it not just for right.、Um, For a drink, but for more, for preventing illness, and he discovered a bunch of stuff that you can eat in terms of herbs. Right. I just want to、uh, uh, mention something here because here is a direct quote of、uh, Lu Yu's uh, uh, classic of tea.、Mm. It says "why tea." That's uh, uh, in the quote, and、uh, I people are fairly familiar enough with Shenong, but then probably you don't know what is Lu Zhou Gong means.、Mm. And、uh, the spreading of Lu Zhou Gong is not spreading this guy. So Lu Zhou Gong is a guy. Is a,、uh, in his time, he got more、uh, a little、mm. bit more popular. And again, in the format of Lu Zhou Gong, I don't. I wouldn't do that. So Gong is a title、uh, for this guy. This guy is the brother of a starting em- emperor in the Zhou Dynasty, which is about four thousand years ago. Kind of that realm. Wow. Yeah, and、uh, Lu is where he was、uh, attributed to, sent to. Like that's his land. Right, his region, his.、Um, so、his region, Lu means the region. Zhou Gong is more of his name.、Mm-hmm. So a lot of times in Chinese、uh, and English translation, I found the name, the format of name, la- of name is quite.、Uh, Lose.、Mm-hmm. How do you? Where do you put space and stuff like that? Right.、Uh, usually, the the I think in translation, what they do is when it's a、uh, name is all together. Like people's first first name is together as one word, space last name.、Mm-hmm. Or if it's a city, it's a、uh, t- 
together, Beijing together,、mm. Shanghai together,、mm-hmm. and so just want to throw that out. This is a guy, and、uh, this guy is not like Lu Zhou as the first name, or Gong as the last name, or something. No. Right. He's from Lu. Lu is、uh-huh. Lu. Not from is he is later on、right. got、okay. his land aside over there. Yeah, and I guess the other thing in the Shenong legend,、um, I'm like uh, like uh, Josh said, it's the first time he's heard that version of it.、Mm-hmm. Um, I had heard bo- that version, but still, there's a lot of the legend that is foggy. Like、um, you know, he it, they just mentioned that he tasted a bunch of herbs to figure out if they're poisonous or not,、um, or but. It's kind of vague. Like, do, is, was he a person? Was he a bunch of people? It's sort of this is way before history, right? Yes, it's a prehistory. Oftentimes, I suggest people to look at it as,、uh, as, you know, a group of people. Imagine those people through a long period of time,、mm. they figure out something, and just、uh, for the how we like to simplify, beautify,、mm. elevate things,、uh, we call that Shenongshi. But it's more realistic than one person did all that and got recorded. It's probably a long, long、yeah, time it, of frame of a you know group. It's, Yeah,、working. it's probably a way of respecting the the ancestral yes, work of figuring、right. out what's edible and what's、right. not. Lots of people、right. probably didn't make it. Yes, and and also it mentions that he tasted hundreds of herbs. I happen to know for a fact that Chinese people eat way more than hundreds of herbs. <laughs> it's probably he ate thousands of herbs. You guys are really veggie、yes. addicts. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like that,、mm. and also there's another thing I found was interesting is could be confusing. Emperor Yan, also named the Shenong,、mm. is recognized.、Uh, it sounded like Emperor Yan named the Shenong as the ancestor. Blah blah、yes. blah. However, it's in Chinese, and、uh, which the fact is Shenong also is Emperor Yan. Yeah,、so、I totally I fell into that trap. Here, yes. So I think here it would be more、uh, understandable if、uh, they said Emperor Yan, comma also named、mm-hmm. Shenong, comma is recognized. So Shenong is we we call ourselves、uh, Yan Huang Zi Sun is their our ancestor, kind of thing. So yeah, just that they're not two people. Yeah, I think that's about it. There、mm-hmm. was a talk about the transplanting,、uh, the little tree to the human bush. Um, I don't think、yeah. that's sort of、It、part of the story, right? Very limited record. You cannot really、mm. search for the specific time and、yeah. what actually、yeah. happened. No record of it's those. It's prehistoric, right? This dude、yes. is prehistoric, so、yeah. there's no record. So you can、stuff. fill in the story however you like. But he might stumble across and got hit by the tea bush and was like, "Oh, no way! I'm gonna eat you!" and found that. Yeah, or a drip fell in his <laughs> mouth. I think that's one. You never、that. know. <laughs> <laughs> That's our original. <laughs> All right. So the next section is page fifteen. I'm going to go on with that.、Mm-hmm. All right. The book of Shenong's herbal. Okay. So the book of Shenong's herbal had recorded that Shenong tasted hundreds of herbs and being in seventy-two poisons, but was cured when he discovered tea. This is better proved that tea as a drink and medicine was discovered by chewing of Shenong and his experiments. Mm-hmm. This is really tough. It has still remained in some minorities of Yunnan province that people eat fresh tea leaves and pots. It has been thousands of years since Shenong's Shenong period. Tea has already served as a public health drinks and wafted to every family. Currently, besides China, there are a lot of people in different countries are fond of drinking tea. Tea has been not only as an integral part of daily life. More of the beverage as a kind of life culture, which comes from distant myths and legends, has been into modern life. So let's tackle this section. So they mention the book of Shenong's herbal, herbal. So I actually wasn't familiar with the book that Shenong. It's a、had. oh Shenong didn't have a book. This is a totally different time frame. Shenong is prehistorical, and this、mm. book is、uh, one of the classics in Chinese. Uh, traditional Chinese medicine, and it's、uh, around like the Han Dynasty, about two、right. hundred-ish.、Uh, 
BC before, yeah,、right. before BC, but it, but it credits it credits Shenong this sort of blob of people who、yes. have figured yes. out all this. Yes, because that record recorded like hundreds, three hundred something of different herbs, or what is a good, bad, and what is used for,、mm. and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay, and then it goes on.、Um, tasted hundreds of herbs and being in seventy two poisons. We mentioned、pure. that before. Seventy four is seventy、uh, two. It's not seventy two. It's a lot, right? Yes, it's、yeah. a figurative like a lot. So he ate a whole bunch of herbs, and a bunch of them were poison. Yeah, basically, and he discovered tea, and I think they mean that it was、uh, pretty useful in terms of dealing with these poisons.、Mm. Right. And in、uh, the、uh, Chinese version of the book, that paragraph what you just read is almost like rephrasing the freeze,、uh, the previous. Uh, page, but that was in quote. Means、mm. uh, sh- oh, I don't want. I won't say Chinese because there's no point. But it's a strict quote from the book.、Mm-hmm. So this is better proved that he is a drinker. So then, the chewing of Shenong is a little bit c-、uh, confusing too, because obviously nobody chewed Shenong. <laughs> it、um, means the Shenong chew. Right,、like、Shenong. And more referring to the like connect with the next. Uh, uh, Sentence, which is meaning that the Shenong chewed eating fresh leaves, and in original Chinese version, provides a little bit example of what are the people who still、uh, eat raw tea leaves. Like in Yunnan province, there's a, a Bulangzu or Wazu or Deangzu. Those people、mm. uh, still eat fresh leaves. And then, so then the next paragraphs talk about it's been thousands of years. Obviously, this is prehistoric Shenong.、Um, thousands of years. I think it means since tea has been served as as both been used as medicine and a drink,、mm-hmm. and is now in every family. Yes.、Um, and even beyond China, there's people all over the world enjoying tea. Yeah. And it's not only part, of, yeah, not、guessable. too bad, not too part of, not 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 just part of daily life, but、uh, but part of culture because of its long history is、mm-hmm. sort of what the last paragraph seems to be saying. Yeah. Okay. And、uh, let's check out the questions. Are, are we done this section? Let's. Yeah. Let's, yeah.、Uh, perfect. So great time to check for questions. While I queue up the next section. Right. So. Oh, is this a historical?、Oh. I think we're up near the top. Right, right, right. Yeah.、Uh, Just to try Bram, and find. Bram from was it Norway? Norway. So cool, Bram. So cool. <laughs> he asks, "Is this a historical emperor, or is it, or is he legendary?" So I think we kind of t- touched on that. Yes. It's probably a bunch of people. Shenlong is a prehistory kind of、yeah. a you know emperor and a legendary mixed together. That's why a lot of picture you see he has a horse. Yeah, yeah. He's a pretty. <laughs> For Westerners, actually, that's a pretty interesting cultural point.、Um, he he looks a lot like a devil to Westerners. Pretty,、oh. yeah, pretty not good.、Um, oh, yeah, because we have so much Christian、uh, heritage and lore and myths in our history. When I first saw Shimon, I'm like, who's that devil? Is he going to、uh, be? And he even looks pretty mean. That horse, which is a bit, you know. You know the dragon, Chinese dragon, look different、mm. than Western dragon. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that horn is the same as the West、um, Chinese dragon, which our horn is not a horn. It's a s- elements from different animals. So that's from deer,、uh, mini deer. So it's、Chinese、kind of、deer. like a vitality indicator or something, or that was I think it was anyway. Not even groups of people, definitely not right.、Evil. But if so, if you see if you see those old pictures of Shenong,、mm. my first thought. I don't know. Maybe nobody agrees, but I thought, wow, who's the little devil? <laughs> right? He looked a little bit、um, pretty ugly and pretty mean with his, and then have horns. Like that's a, because like a it's a, a legendary kind of people. So you don't know how they look. We、mm-hmm. give it a lot of things. Or we think that if you look really different, it's a good sign. Ah. So that's why he doesn't almost doesn't look like a decent man. <laughs> right, right. Okay, good, good. Okay, definitely next, good one. Next. <laughs> so,、um, you know, I wonder if that is actually plausible. Perhaps if he had eaten a plant that wasn't literal poison but was kind of a natural sedative, then perhaps the caffeine relied. Yeah, it's really, yeah, that's a totally possible. Like we were saying, you can kind of make up your own legend right, at that point.、Right. It's just there's this sort of、um, tea has several kind of. And then we're talking digest. Depends on what. 
So yeah, Pei, Pei Chen mentions that tea has these uh, these chemical components that do help with toxins, and even I think we've noticed that there's right. oftentimes with medicine or the doctor, well, if you tell them you drink tea, they'd be like, well, don't if you're taking medicine, they'll say don't drink, right. don't drink your tea with the medicine. If there are historical references of consumptions of tea that date from before the Shenmong writings, why is there no talk of them, and why is he right. attributed? I think you clarified this a bit too. Yeah. Shenong doesn't have writings. There's yes. no Shenong writings. Yes. It's a bit, the way it's phrased in the book is definitely confusing and make you feel like they're his writings. Right. But it was actually, I think you mentioned Han Dynasty. Yes, right? it wasn't the Shenong's book. Mm. Yeah. Of course, many emperor's stories are lovely. Parable? Yep. Parables. I think perhaps the use of a royalty leads an heir to nobility to certain origin mm. or stories of discovery. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think so. That's probably why they ball up that whole evolution into one figure. What is the next one? Is that herbal anything like a Mata Materia? Materia Medica? What is that? No, I don't know. I don't know. I learned something in Chinese history class about in Daoing. In Daoing emperors? Or certain religious with fantastic features is a kind of man to give them some divinity yes. and reinforce. Yes, that's right. That's yeah. absolutely right. So almost every starting the emperor of the empire, we have you know legends and stuff about them, cut super snakes and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're gonna cruise right on into the next section. Mm -hmm. China is the hometown of tea. Sounds like a Bruce Springsteen song almost. Right. But, um, so uh, I'll jump right in here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to do a bit of scrolling while I read this one. China is the hometown of tea as well as the origin of Eastern tea art. Tea, as an old but fashioned drink, has been to every corner of the world since the old tea horse road. China is the original place of the tea bush. The origin of tea has been argued many years. Since 1930s, Wu Junong has written the book Proof of the origin of tea, which demonstrated that the tea originated from China. Half a century later, in 1978, Wu Junong published an article that named Southwestern part of China is the or published an article oh, that named Southwestern part of China is the origin of tea and confirmed that the southwestern area where Yunnan, Guizhou, and Sichuan were included are the original places of tea. Let's tackle this. Let's tackle this bit by bit. We'll do this little piece, and then we'll do the other piece because the other piece is pretty long. Right, but I think this is pretty straightforward. You got the gist of it. The only thing which is interesting is, mm. uh, it's twenty twenty. Uh, twenty twenty. I mean, uh, the twenties of twentieth century, which is nineteen twenties, not nineteen thirties. I don't know why it's suddenly become that. Oh, weird. So that's, that's a, a mistake, I think. It's just a straight up typo. Yeah, probably. Mm, I totally, yeah. uh, my history of is not strong enough to have detected that. Mm. Um, so basically, Wu Jianong uh, has, uh, which is considered the chi modern Chinese tea sage, has written mm. two articles to prove uh, it's pretty academic and uh, really... Uh, yeah, we're moving out of the realm of legend here right. and into the realm of really checking the historical record and the bio right. botanical and it's the books and mm. the, those the paper kind of mm. prove the origin of China, uh, origin of tea is in the southwest of China. Mm -hmm. mm. So the next section is the five legends of tea bush's origin. So I'm gonna, so I'll just read it and we'll come back to it. The legends of the origin of tea bush are listed below. One, origin from the southwest. Southwestern part is the original place of tea bushes and tea. This statement refers to a wide area and has higher accuracy. Two, origin from Sichuan province. Hu Yan Wu's book, Re Zhi Lu, has recorded that ever since Shu has taken by Qing, tea drinking was begun. It means that before Qing entering in Shu, Sichuan people, whom are nowadays called, had already drunk tea. Actually, Sichuan province is in the southwest. If this saying is true, so is the southwest saying. Don't worry, we're coming back to all of this, folks, but I'm going to power through all five of these and we'll come back and go over them. Origin from Yunnan province. It is possible for Yunnan is the original place of tea bush because Sichuan Bana is the kingdom of plants. However, tea bush can be grown itself. 
T is the process of humans' hard work. Whew. Four, origin from eastern of Sichuan and western of Hubei province. In Lu Yu's Book of Tea, had told that there were outstanding tea bushes, whether people made them as tea or not. So far, there has been no more evidence. Five, origin from Jiangsu and Zhejiang province. Recently, someone has proposed that tea is origin from the old Yu's culture, which is the representative of He Mudu culture. The area of Jiangsu and Zhejiang province has the most developed tea industry. If the history were origined here, it would be an interesting topic. Okay, wow. This is, now it's getting fun because we're getting out of sort of legend and that. Well, first let me address the title. Five Legends of Tea Bush's Origin is... It's not legends. It's not, Those it's are misleading. more like a, yeah. a schools of thoughts, a schools of mm -hmm. hypotheses, debates mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So legends, what I felt was a really bad start. I could, you can feel that we're moving into right. the real, but it says legends. And we just came out of a legend section. So right. we really need to be clear that these are the five and it thoughts. was Right, five thoughts. And it was talking about uh, the origin of the tea bush. I think if you, uh, like a... Finish this full point. So they're not talking about the tea bush itself. It's a tea bush there with the people utilizing the yes. tea bush. Yeah, I think it's right. Not necessarily cultivated, but at least yes. tea in date in use somehow. Yes, yes, right? that's um, what it is to say. So yeah, so, so those kind of uh, the different uh, points all have a. Uh, uh, they're proved in some historical re uh, record or stuff like that, in some quotes and stuff, to kind of uh, support those kind of thoughts. Yeah. So the first one, I'm just going to go through the points now, mm -hmm. right? So the first one was just the Southwest origin, which is, although it's a bit, the wording is chunky, it's pretty understandable. It says basically, tea originates in the Southwest of China and and it's likely accurate because it's vague. We're not saying it was right at this city or right at that city. It's that region of, mm. I think, about you know, Yunnan, um, yeah. Guizhou kind of area, right? Yeah. Then another one kind of, they got kind of get pro progressively more specific and possibly a little bit less. Oh, mm. the, I think the last sentence in number one we should call, talk. Uh -huh. It says, this statement refers to a wide area and has higher accuracy. That doesn't really give the flavor of the meaning, right? This actually means it's widely accepted, not, yes. right? It's, it's yeah. a widely accepted theory that it comes from the Southwest Most of China. Most of the people agree on that. Right. Yeah. And to avoid argument, if you stay in that zone, you're not going to get down. You're and not also, the, if uh, read the five points, is from the most popular, most confirmed to the least popular, mm. which is the Jiangsu. Uh, Zhejiang, which means the east coast of China. Mm. And just want to point out, because there is no footnote on that, uh, He Mudu culture is a very ancient culture mm. um, in the Zhejiang and uh, Jiangsu area. Again, prehistoric. Oh yeah, it's about 5,000 or 3,000 BC, mm. kind of a really ancient times. Mm. But the, the Focus in 2011, right? Then there's a lot of uh, more research and stuff mm. has been done since then. So I really feel nowadays probably most people would settle on the first one. Right, right. right. Um, shall we continue through those? So the number two is the Sichuan province, which is just a little bit more specific. But it does mention Gu Yan Wu and Ruju Lu recorded ever since the Shu. So that it's h really hard to understand if you don't have a pretty strong grasp on Chinese history, which believe me, I don't. Mm. It was pretty hard to understand what was going on here. This period is about uh, 200 BC, mm. two to 300 BC. It happens when Qing uh, get rid of Shu, which is in this roughly Sichuan era. When mm -hmm. they conquer that, they bring in this kind of habit, which means their people there already have the habit of drinking tea. Right, exactly. So, um, and it's in the southwest, so it's just kind of a little, a little detail on top of theory number one or, or hypothesis number one. Mm. So then there's the Yunnan province origin story mm -hmm. that just says, "I love the I love the kingdom of plants." It's possible that Yunnan is the origin place of the tea bush because Sichuan Bana is the kingdom of plants. So been there, we've been there, right? And it is lush. Everything grows yes. everywhere, and. Um, 
the tea bush will just grow on its own. Uh, but it's, the last sentence was really confusing for me because it says, however, tea bush can be grown itself. Tea is the process of humans' hard work. So it seemed like they were implying Eel. that um, tea will grow on its own there without any, without any help, which I, told, I assume because everything will grow there. You throw a mango put on the ground, you have a mango tree in a couple of years. But also, they were cultivating it. It seemed like that's what they're trying to say. No, I think what they're saying is what it's not a, at that time fully confirmed that they mm. were um, cultivating, and uh, not just cultivating, utilizing. Right. You can grow that in the wild to make that into the tea that people utilize. It's not necessarily there so far I in see. the book's time. It's not confirmed. Mm. as the, the earliest of using tea. Got it. So it was definitely, while it was very likely growing there, it, there's no um, proof that it was in use uh, by people. Mm. Mm. Okay, got it. So that was really a little confusing bit. So with that to know, all the points are talking about not only tea tree growing there, this is not just the tea plants already, mm -hmm. it's actually utilizing tea. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Shall we move to the next part? Want to check for questions, or what about? Yeah, sure. I think those. Do you have any questions with those? Yeah, I okay. think. Um, so they're just now moving east, right? So basically, yeah. um, I think that I think in terms of a tr of a live translation, we have a comment here that Lu in Liu Yu's book of tea, Where? he had told that there were outstanding tea bushes, right? Mm -hmm. So that sounds like really fantastic, you know, delicious tasting tea bushes. Right, but I that's think not a what uh, comes from the origin mm. text. What it says is, uh, in that region, there's a tea bushes, uh, or tea plant needs uh, two people hand in hand to surround to yeah. go around the tree. So what basically, it means gi a gigantic hugging the tree. Yeah, two yeah. people hand in hand hugging the tree. That's the that right. kind of tells the size of the tree. It's huge, mm. gigantic, mm. and then. Um, Finally, we talked a little bit about the uh, Pumudu and the, the Eastern uh, origin story, which is, uh, again, the least sort of accepted. So we can rock to the next section. I don't think anything really stumbled on me there, except, again, the Pumudu being an old and ancient story. Right, and here is like a He space Mudu. I found that those names are somehow very... Sloppily. Sloppily, I, I have a space mm. where I put them together. Mm. It's no... Mm. I would put them all together or all separate. There is no reason to connect the two of them. Yeah, just Mudu suddenly. I'm overly uh, uh, par paranoid about those kind of random stuff. I don't think you're overly <laughs> picky. I think it's uh, good to have convention and follow it. Otherwise, it creates it confusion. Feels which is a, our, and because how name no, no. goes and stuff, you yes. really feel like a first name and last name kind of a combination. No, yeah, there's yeah. something happening there. I think it's really important. You're on to something there. Uh, the footnote is kind of interesting here too. I'll mm -hmm. just read it out. Mm -hmm. uh, Wu Junong, the founder of Chinese modern tea history, he is a productive writer. Industry, modern tea industry. Industry, yeah. He is a productive writer. His book, Review of Tea of, Review of Tea of Book, is the most <laughs> authoritative work in studying Lu Yu's book of tea. Mm. He is called Modern Tea Saint. Tea so, Saint, Tea Sage. Mm -hmm. Tea yeah, Saint, yeah. Tea Sage. Tea Sage. So that's a bit tricky. Um, so Wu Juanong is a really, really important historic, oh, yeah. modern history the guy. The very first uh, 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 what's China PCR PRC? Oh, Republic? People's Republic PRC. PRC. <laughs> PRC is an uh, agriculture, the head of the agriculture department. Oh, the first minister of he, agriculture kind of thing. Yes, and he set mm. up a lot of rules to help Chinese industry, tea industry recover, set up uh, standards so it's not, so it, it's good for its exporting because there is a standard and lots mm -hmm. of reviving through the war areas. That's a big uh, generation of those people who really dedicated to tea and uh, yeah. He's huge. Yeah, when you have a sip of tea, uh, you have a nod to this guy because mm. he kind of saved tea from the brink of disaster mm. in the uh, 30s, 20s, 30s, 40s. Mm. So, but uh, in terms of translation in here, we've got, a, he's a prolific writer. His book is called uh, Review of the Classic of Tea. Uh, that would be a better English translation. Is the, 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 the style of that book is more of a 
uh, stating because uh, Lu Yu's classic of tea is an old, an old uh, Chinese, right? The translation needs work, and also some comments need to add it and stuff, and that's what he did. Yeah. Maybe we can read that sometime. And he's yeah, that would be fun. And he is the modern tea sage, sort of is a better word than saint. Well, saint is too religious. Yeah, a little bit, I think. <laughs> All okay. right, so let's go to the uh, chat here and check out check out the questions. Mm. Um, Material America, I learned something. I'm trying to find out where we were. Yeah, yeah. So Bram's kind of got it. Basically, those a lot of the theories are just nested inside, trying to get more specific on the Southwest origin story. Mm. Um, but if you kind of keep it at the high level, you're pretty safe. Is there a way we can purchase this book? Uh, stay tuned. We'll see if we can answer that. that mm. <laughs> Borrow time to switch to new home. Good call. I'm sorry, I have to go, but I'll see you later. Very interesting. Thanks. No problem, Igor. We'll catch you later. It's getting late over overseas. Mm. Okay, good. I think we're caught up on the questions. Rocking and rolling. Yes. Okay, we're on page 19, if anybody is following along in the book. Uh, I think it's the... Uh, so here we go. Old Tea Horse Road, fun stuff, all right? Tea Horse Road is one of the world's most spectacular natural scenery and is the most mysterious traveling route because of its culture. It is the fifth passage of foreign exchange in Chinese history, together with the Silk Road, has the same importance, historical value, and status. It has the endless development of cultural heritage. The Tea Horse Road originated from the exchange between the tea, the tea and horses in Tang and Song Dynasty. In ancient times, the local officials and the mainland people's army needed excellent mules and horses, whereas tea is the necessity for border people to live. Therefore, people in the Tibetan region, Sichuan and Yunnan frontier area started to exchange their better horses with mainland's tea, as a result that the marketing between tea and horses formed. The ancient tea horse road has two main routes. One is the ancient tea horse road between Yunnan and Tibet, which was formed in the late 6th century from Puar original place, today Sichuan Bana, Simao, etc., Bai Dali, Lijiang, Zhongdian, Deqing, to 15 Tibetan Zhogong, Bangda, Cha Yu, or via Kamdo, Lo Rong, <laughs> Gongbo Giabdanda. <laughs> I just train wrecked on that one. Lhasa via Gyeongju, ADP, respectively to Burma, Bhutan, Sikkim, Nepal, India. Puar, Puar, which has its unique advantage, is the origin and transition and distribution center of goods, and it has a long history. The second is from Sichuan, Ya'an, via Luding, Kangling, Batang, Kamdo, via Lorong, Gongbo Gyamada, to Lhasa, to Nepal, India. This is an important trading channel of the ancient Chinese and South Asia. Whew. All right. Okay, so I think the beginning is pretty good. Old Tea Horse Road. Mm. I think probably a lot of tea people have heard of it. Um, yeah. And if you haven't, it's a, it's a great, like this whole section is very foundational, important part of the history of tea. Mm -hmm. Okay, so pretty good start. Um, that, lots of beautiful natural scenery. It is the fifth passage of passage of foreign exchange in Chinese history. Um, I think the it's and that's there's Silk Road. Uh, there's it struck me as odd, but I think you guys Silk keep Road, careful yeah, track of those, that. right? Yeah. So for me, fifth was a little bit weird, but basically you get easily see that it has the same status and importance as the Silk Road, which is kind of common knowledge among people. Uh, people. Right. Even Westerners know the Silk Road is so famous, right? So T-Horse Road, maybe not, but Silk Road, now you know. Yeah. Okay, T-Horse Road, really important. Um, tons of heritage. Then it gets into Para 2. Um, the, why is it called the T-Horse Road, right? Because it's sort of where they established changing, um, trading horses for tea. It's a little bit foggy there if you didn't know that. So it's a bit hard for me to, um, like, I kind of knew that, but I think it's a little bit chunky enough that it might be confusing for people that basically it's called the T-Horse Road because the 
frontier people who didn't live in sort of the centralized yeah it, it, it uses the word mainland and the border and stuff like mm. that it's mostly like a central china the more plainish area vis-a-vis -vis the high high region mm. like the yunnan west with a little bit of like geography difference and of course the population and people difference is the central china vis-a-vis -vis the remote area in general almost like imperial china versus not like the outsiders kind of yeah except i think we predate imperial right? no yeah it's already imperial. okay perfect so so that was a bit confusing um mm. so basically tea wars arose i think uh two things here is uh, the gist of the paragraph two is just uh, it's using teeth to exchange horses and stuff that's how this route started formed and got its name and yeah. of course it wasn't only used for that so para three um now it para three i found very very confusing <laughs> like and because of the amount of detail they go into um but basically if you mm. if you level up and step away a bit Basically, there's two main tea horse roads. Mm, one yes. goes from Yunnan to Tibet and out into India, mm -hmm. and the other one goes from uh, Ya'an Sichuan on a slightly from different route Sichuan to uh, through through Tibet and out into India on a slightly with the route sometimes yeah. overlapping and sometimes not. Yes, read, well, but it was really tough read for me to go through that because of the vias. Uh, and the things that always right, but strip down those words, you see those are city, 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 mm -hmm, city that mm -hmm. describing the route. Yeah. Like uh, you can Google Map it and see That's it. That's right. And those two major routes are right now still the major route to go to mm. Tibet. Yes. Just with the roads, uh, Dianzhang and yeah. Chuanzhang Gong Lu. Mm. And uh, here it says the ancient uh, two main routes, and uh, just uh, want to add, uh, we call that a uh, tea horse road. Uh, so people think there's this route yes. and that route tops, and uh, it's more accurate to call that tea horse roads. Tea horse trade network. Network, <laughs> yes, because uh, the geography, the landscaping there is uh, this season and last season might be different, but summer and stuff, or like how yeah, even not passable during certain seasons. Yes. So it's actually lots of little routes. There are the cities listed here are those T cities, mm. but how you actually get there and some different routes is a whole network. Sure, yeah. And if you get there alive. Oh yeah. yeah. Pretty treacherous for me. Yes, yes. It's so, really risking your life. Yeah, for, so in the money. translation, <laughs> I just did a, a couple cities, couple major cities, mm. and then countries. Right. I really stripped it down to basics because otherwise yeah. it zigzag make my brain explode. Yes, yes. But, um, so check it's out. A, it's a interesting. It's a, because you are not familiar with those, so when you hear that, your brain shut off. It's just mm. a, like when I hear people talk about, see, those towns in central Canada that I never heard right, of. Right, right. Small like, villages Or like a BC, those little towns, mm. I would have no mm. idea what you're saying. Yeah. So, right. so okay. So that's that section. And have a quick check for... Um, no, I think we're still caught up. Yeah. So finally... Tea, the last section for today, tea is Chinese people's totem beverage. Tea is Chinese people's totem beverage. Tea has taught us containment and toleration and make us know and realize and return to ourselves. Among the crowds, if there is a cup of tea in hand, you will soon merge into the nature and the world. To feel and enjoy the calm and ease, life is in your mind. As it is said that, although you are in the noisy part, you don't care what happened around you. People may ask, why can you do that? Why you can do this? Just because you make yourself far away from the noisy world. <laughs> okay. So totem tea title. Tea is Chinese people's totem beverage. I I didn't I found totem to be really like, what does that mean? Like uh so I think it's more I think I picked uh I think there's a better word for that. Like tea is a is an important cultural beverage of the Chinese people, but um, I don't even remember the word I picked. But I did pick a specific word for that. But that's the gist of what it means. But I found totem was already I was mini lost, uh, right. especially if I'm brand new to tea. Um, 
it's kind of a going back to what we discussed before. Is a tea is a beverage and above a beverage for Chinese、mm. because there's cultural implications. There's that kind of Zen meditational、mm. kind of、uh, implication in it. Yeah. So that's yeah. I thought I know. I actually took quite a while to translate just that word because it's a section. Head, I need a word for that,、mm. so I actually did a bit of digging. I'm a little bit embarrassed; I can't remember. But be sure to check out our translation, which will、mm. pop up in the. Oh, and the, the last,、uh, last part, which in some is really weird. Like people may、mm. ask why you can do like this. In the origin, the Chinese version is actually comes straight from a poem. It's、mm. translated, and to be honest, I won't even translate that because it's really hard. It's a poem. I gave it a shot.、Hole. I gave it a shot, so、right? be sure to check it out. So、uh, that's why it sounded weird.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why it sounded. It sort of went up to Zen level two. Right. right? It was super, it was super a, Zen. It was a quote. Yeah, it's quoted right out of. Is it like a classic poem or something? Or in, mm-hmm, in, mm-hmm. right. Most of people would know that. So basically, the paragraph.、Um, I'm not sure if it's. It's basically understandable, though. Basically, tea is a beverage and more than a beverage, and. Has an implication on your peace of mind.、Mm-hmm. All right, great map. I、uh, I actually took another picture of the map and put it on its own page so people can yeah, stare at that. Yeah, it's actually a great. So you、map. could follow along the list of cities that is there and see、mm. the route.、Um, but this does give you the sense that it's more of a network and less of a single road, like you mentioned. C I A L. What does that mean? What are you looking at?、Yeah. Oh, it's official, but it's oh, 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 it's clip. Okay, okay. I didn't worry too okay, much about because it's,、okay. it's cut. From it's、here. okay. I just、uh, I didn't know that word. <laughs> Seals. Okay, so、um, that is what we wanted to cover for today. Yeah, that is for today. Let's check for questions here. Right. So thank you so much for doing this. Super interesting. You're so welcome, Cindy. Thank you for、mm. joining us. Yes. Josh agreed that it was a Zen section. Jeff Fuchs, who traveled. Yes. So so. Oh, and so where is him? Is he still in Yunnan or somewhere? Hmm. Yeah, I, I was thinking of Jeff as I <laughs>、right? read that、Did、section too. I swear, I was totally like, yeah, he's been. He knows <laughs> it's a network. He's been all. He's been in and out through all kinds of the different passes that we were kind of talking about. Yes, yes. <clears throat> totally agree. Ah,、uh, thank you, Bram. Hmm. So、uh, in next week's、uh, read, we will talk more about it's the soil, it's the climate, a little bit.、Mm. Getting a little bit more nerdy, more nerdy, more botanical. Talk about、uh, trees and stuff, less of the cultural stuff. And、uh, I hope this is interesting. And this is our very first try. Let us know if you have any suggestions、Absolutely. that we could, you know, improve. And、uh, how is the video quality? You can read the the、yep. thing. Yeah. Can、no、you read、problem? it? Is do you like the way we're scrolling、mm. through the book?、Uh, everything from the way we're technically approaching this to the、uh, to the way we're sort of format wise.、Mm. Give us your comments and uh, thoughts. Um, but hopefully you found that interesting. I really love this book because it does cover the culture, the soil, the botany, the drinks, the famous teas. Like it's a really great starting point.、Mm-hmm. Um, super excited to do this. So. Be sure to click like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. So when we go live, you'll get a little ding, ding, ding in your pocket,、mm-hmm. reminding you that we're on. We've got the next few sessions scheduled. You can see those on our channel.、Mm-hmm. And if you think we're doing some good stuff and interesting content about tea, be sure to share this with your friend. Yeah, all your really tea loving friends. It really helps us、uh, grow the channel. And if you want a more、um, a full version of the section we did today,、Definitely. we will be post that on. Uh, underneath、yep. on the link, so you can just、uh, read that through without all this chitty chatty. Yeah, we will have the full translation posted. So,、uh, mm. thank you all for joining us.、Uh, yes. Until next time. Keep steeping. Keep steeping. <laughs>